Hello, this is Hannah Osborne for Jewelry Maker and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this uh, bead embroidery style boho-esque necklace. Um, I've got some reconstituted turquoise cabochons, I've got a selection of seed beads, um, I've got all sorts of things in here really. I'm using an eight pound fire line, uh, I've got some 60 Miyuki seed beads, some 80 beads, couple of colours of the 11 O's and some of these lovely little delicas which I believe are three millimetres. Um, the kits that uh, equate to this necklace are RJXC04 which is the boho beading kit, OWXC20 which is a uh, turquoise triumph so these, these wonderful little flowers and of course the cabochons and then um, as an upsell there's some um, sort of bead embroidery uh, essentials like your foundation sheet uh, which is RGXC30. Okay so to start with if I move everything out of the way I'm just going to show you this um, section here because the two are a similar kind of principle. So to start with, if you take some of your um, beading foundation, and I've just used um, a super glue in this case, and I've stuck my cabochon onto it, um, and ma made a rough kind of circle, because that's, that's sort of the shape I was going for to start with. I'm just going to tip out some of the 6O Miyuki beads. Like that. Move all the rest out of the way to start with. Um, I've got some tulip needles here which I've threaded with my fire line thread and uh, I usually use like a size 10, possibly a size 12 needle depending on what you're working with. This one's a 10. And I'm going to start off, I'm literally going to pass it through the back near to the cabochon. But obviously you can't push it through the cabochon so uh, you have to get it as close as you can. I'm going to pull that through and then I haven't tied a knot, you can if you want to, but I'm just going to hold the end of it there. So it's a nice simple technique and I'm going to pick up four of my seed beads. I'm still hanging onto the tail at the end, so behind the cabochon. I'm just going to position them next to it and where they sit nice and comfortably I'm then going to pass the needle back through like that. Okay, so they will sit next to it. I'm still holding on to that tail. Now what I want to do is basically I'm trying to get the needle in the middle of the four beads I've just added. So you have to give it a bit of trial and error really until it comes up somewhere in the centre of your stitching. And then once it's come through you're going to pass the needle through the last two of the beads that you've added like that. Again you're still hanging on to this tail unless you've tied a knot. Okay and then I'm going to continue that process. So the same again, I'm going to pick up four, I'm going to let them slide down towards the rest of the stitching. Like that, I'm going to offer them up so that they sit kind of close. They don't, they, you don't want to be too close but at the same time you don't want them to be floppy either so you need them to be kind of behaving themselves I guess. Okay, so again, we've got just added those four, and I'm going to pass the needle back up through the centre again, like so, and through the last two beads. And I'm going to keep doing that until I go all the way around. So the good thing with these beads is they're nice and large, so they stitch up quite quickly. Also, if you've never done seed beading before, they're really helpful because, you know, with the, the large hole through the middle of them, it means you don't have to uh, struggle too much with it. Passing that through to the back, up through the middle. Don't worry if you don't come up exactly in the middle. So that's that's about three beads back, I'd say. If you end up like that, rather than worrying, just make sure you go through. You see the threads coming out about here. So I'm going to pass that through those three. The idea is you're you're kind of securing them together but you're also securing them to the, the backing fabric at the same time. Let's get another four. You see how quickly they're, they're sort of circling that lovely turquoise cabochon in the middle. Then passing through and again back up through the middle. 
if you can, you want to try and get as close to the cabochon as you can so that the thread that's going through the beads um, is kind of on the outermost side. And that way, you, when you pull it tight, it pulls it into the cabochon. One, two, three, four. Passing them through. It's nice and satisfying actually because when you can see how quickly you can make a component, you can then do additional pieces. So if you wanted to, you could make a brooch or a ring or something to go with the necklace as well. And all you'd need to do is just essentially repeat this section because it will match your necklace exactly. So I'm almost there, adding four again. And at this point, you'll see the tail where we started is now secure. It's not going anywhere. So you can let go of it. You don't have to worry about it so much. It's kind of like a back stitch, really, just uh, securing everything in place. One, two, three, four. Pass that through. And I haven't um, set an exact number of beads. I would say go by eye on this particular style. I mean, I believe these cabochons are actually all the, the same size, but if there is any variation, I wouldn't get too hung up on it. It's just a case of make sure that you can see a clear line of the colour of the bead that you want. So I reckon I can get two in there to finish that row. So in this case, I'm going to pass it as close as I can to the first bead that was added like that and you'll see it's a little bit jiggledy you know higgly piggly because they're, they're all trying to sort of jostle for, for position so again i'm just going to pass the needle back up through and then this time i'm going to pass the needle all the way around all of the beads like going through the center of all of the beads and this just kind of um secures them really and helps them to all sit together so all the way through all the way around like this and you can go through several of them in one, in one go with this because um, they're nice you know nice big beads so that one that's poking out there needs a bit of taming pop that in there when you're happy with them you're gonna so you get this lovely sort of circle and so you can see on the actual necklace there you've got the first circle so the next thing to do is come down a size so I've got these lovely bright green Ato beads and of course the seed beads go in reverse don't they so the so the smaller the number the bigger the bead because it's the number of beads you can fit end on end in an inch so you'd be able to get more of these in than you would those okay so for the next row it's the same principle I'm going to pick up a few go for four again and I'm going to start off, I'm just going to try and position it as best as I can because they will try and jostle about a little bit. And again, it's the same principle. You're going to pass the needle through. You're going to come up in the middle. But this time you've got to come up between the two rows of beads rather than between the cabochon and the beads. And again, that one, I think I go through the two there. So you're going to do that all the way around. If you want to, once you've got all the way around with the green ones, you can then um, secure them to the blue beads as well. So you can stitch them almost in like little circles. So if I just show you what I mean with this one, just pass that through there. So the normal stitch would be up between the two layers of beads and then through the end there. If you're worried about them moving, so so at the moment you, you can move them apart from each other, you can either stitch back through a couple of the beads here. So back through the six O's and then back through the nearest available selection of the eight O's. And that holds the two rows together. Or you can just simply go over the top and stitch it downwards so like that and both of those techniques so you've got to make sure that that actually goes between the 
bead your nearest. There we go, like that. Both of those techniques will secure it to the first row. So I'm going to go all the way around with the green beads and then all the way around I switch to a smaller size, so the 11 O's, and in this one I've alternated between orange and turquoise and do the same all the way around and then you get to something that looks a bit like this. If you ignore the gold bit at the minute. <laughs> those there. So you can see I've got my 6 O's, 8 O's, down to 11 O's but I've alternated the colours, exactly the same technique all the way around and then I'm going to start adding this edging which is these lovely bugle beads that we've got. So I've added a few here just to show you how it goes. Move these out of the way and get some more of these out. you like that. Okay, so whoops, sorry. So imagine they're not there. So you're starting off either with the same piece of thread or you can add a new, a new piece and just push it through the back like you did before. And I'm going to pass the needle as close as I can through the back of the fabric nearest to your outer edge of beads. Pass that through. I'm going to pick up a bugle bead and I'm going to let it slide all the way down like that. I'm going to hold it in position and then I'm going to pass the needle back through almost in the same spot, slightly further along. So you're kind of lashing it to the edge of the um, shape that you've cut. So if you're not sure about this edge, um, now's the time to, to tidy it up. Or if you like an organic finish, then leave it and you can always do like a pico edging afterwards. So once you've added that bead, you're then going to pass your needle through the bugle bead. I don't know if you can see. It's going right through that bead. Okay, get that toe out of the way. Okay, just give it a little wiggle so it sits nice and neatly. Then again, I'm going to pass the needle back through. So it's kind of going around the outside edge, so pass the needle back up in position for the next bead. I'm going to add another one, let it come down to the bottom like that. And again, around the outside edge and back up really close to where, you, where your needle started for the last bugle bead. Pull that through. Once it's through, you then pass the needle through the bead you've just stitched on. Okay, you see that? Give it a little wiggle. And it's just a case of continuing to do that until you get all the way round and you get this lovely sort of shimmering edge. Let's do a few more. Sometimes I found that the um, the bugle bead like slips around. There you go. That's a perfect example. So it slipped round to the back. That's fine. You just help it <laughs> manoeuvre it into position. And then once you pass the needle through, it then secures it. So you keep doing that all the way around until you've got this lovely sort of finish here. Okay. And the next thing I thought I might show you, rather than rather than going all the way around, I can show you the, the same principle here for the tassels on this one. So I'll just untangle those slightly. So these, this piece is, is made in exactly the same way, so that the cabochon is stuck into the middle, and then I've stitched in um, the spear beads and there's longer bugle beads, and there's all sorts of lovely beads, and it's, it's the same principle as this. You just treat the uh, spear beads in the same way that you would a normal bead. So you stitch a few on and then you come back underneath and you go back through the last half of the beads you've added. doesn't matter that's a different shape. Then to make the tassels, move these out of the way. I'm going to get some more of my smaller beads. So these are the 11 O's, turquoise colour. I love that colour. It's my favourite colour. Well, one of the favourite colours. 
and then some orange. And then I think I've got most of the others there. I need some of my spear beads. Which I should just put a handful there. And the longer eagle beads. These are all part of the kit. Did you say what size they are? I can't think. They're definitely a lot larger. So that's the ones we, ha we have been using. And then these are the other ones that are available in the kit as well. Okay, so imagining I'm making this drop here. Um, you can decide at the beginning how many of the drops you want, or you can just keep going till you get to a point where you think, yeah, that looks kind of okay. So for this one, I've got a turquoise, three of the orange, a turquoise, 6-0, a turquoise, three of the orange, the larger bugle bead, and then alternating colours, and then down to the um, spear bead. So for the purpose of the demo, I will stick to that pattern. So I've got my thread is exiting a bugle bead already. If it's not, then get it into a position where it is. And then I'm going to pick up the turquoise 11 -0, uh, three of the orange 11 -0s, a turquoise, one of the 6-0s. Well, that's a skinny one. I'm going to go for a nice fat one. And then another 11 -0 three of the orange 11 O's and then thread on okay and then I'm going to add my larger bugle bead they're really nice because they've got that lovely twist to them as well which means they catch the light and they're all sparkly oops right now I want an orange 11 O just the one if I can get it one of my green Eight O's, an orange eleven, a green eight, and then an orange eleven. So I try and keep it close to this design so you can see where we're at. We are here. So to do this little drop at the bottom here, I, you've got to cut, go in, um, got to go in a loop. So I'm going to add two more of my eight O's, and then pick a spear bead up. So the spear beads, if you look at them closely, they've got lots of little drill holes. So as long as you're just going through an end one, you'll be fine. Thread that down. Add two more of the orange 11 O's. Now here's the fun bit. You're going to miss those two and you're going to pass your needle all the way up. Move that up a little bit so you can see. So you're making a symmetrical drop here. So you've got two there and two there. And you're going to pass your needle all the way up through all of these beads until you get back up through that bugle bead. So this sometimes takes a little bit of patience because it doesn't always go all the way through everything at once. I'm going to go that far. And then I'm going to pass it through all of these ones here up through that bugle bead so you may need to just pick it up and angle it okay you can see it's all sort of funny and a bit wonky at the minute so I'm just going to hold the spear bead and pull the thread and wiggle it into the position you want it to be so that's your first drop okay and then the next one I'm going to skip downwards through the next bugle bead see that and then I'm actually going to go through the back because I want to be back up at the top okay so you're pulling that back up okay so you've stitched through the next one gone round underneath and up through the back again okay and then you're going to find the next bugle bead along and pass your needle down through it. Okay, this, what this does is when you're making your tassels, it just gives you a little bit of clearance. If you look at that one, 
they're all they've got a bugle beads clearance between them so that they've got mo like movement and space and they don't sort of squish together so this one all I've done when you're when you're making a longer drop is to add more of the first set of orange beads the rest of it is all exactly the same okay so I've got how many have I got there three four five so I'm going to pick up the turquoise one one two three four five of the orange ones turquoise six oh that's the same skinny one I'm going to move that out of the way exactly the same pattern in fact if I thread those down you should be able to see okay then I've got three of the oranges one two three before we go through with these lovely twisted bugle bead and then it's an eight Sorry, it's an 11 and an 8 and then an 11 and an 8 to get that alternating orange and green colour. And then it's three of my 11-0 uh, oranges. Another one of these spear beads. Pass that through there. And then two more of the oranges before going back up through all of the beads so if you remember from the last one you just make sure there are two beads either side of the spear bead and then you pass your thread up through all of the rest of the beads so passing up through them nearly got all the way that time but not quite so picking this up and all the way through and all the way up through that bugle bead again, if it will let you. If you get to a point where you can't get the thread through the bugle bead, pass it behind the backing fabric and up through to the front again. So again, just to straighten that out, get hold of the um, spear bead and the thread, give it a little pull like that. And you can see that's gonna sit slightly lower down because there are slightly more beads at the top. So it's the same principle all the way through. I've used three on this one and then five. Did I go up in odd numbers? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. So three, five, seven, nine. And then you get to your centre one. So that'd be 11. And then you reverse it again. So back to the nine, seven, five, three. And it's the same principle until you've got your lovely finished piece. And then these sections, just to explain them, they're made in the same way. And all I've done is I've just stitched them together. So I haven't got a backing on this, so you can see it, hopefully. You just stitch the two pieces together and then you can turn it into whatever you like, whether that's a brooch or a necklace. And that is my turquoise boho beading necklace so i hope you've enjoyed it thank you for watching